Hey, here we go. We're going to get started on um, a lesson on solving and graphing one variable inequalities. And it's real important that you remember that these are going to be in one variable because sometime in the future we're going to be graphing two variable. And sometimes um, they can look the same. They, can, they will look exactly the same, but they will um, be graphed differently. So let's look at our first page here. Uh, Color-coded, we have um, on top in green the less than symbol, and then right below in red is the greater than symbol, and below that is the less than or equal to symbol, and then the bottom one in light blue is greater than or equal to. These are kind of important to have memorized because um, with these you're going to be able to um, figure out which line, which side of the dot or line to shade, and you need to be able to um, to do that. So make sure you have these memorized. Uh, we use it. Uh, we use one variable inequalities for a situation like this here. Old Mary, she uh, she needs to babysit uh, for eight dollars per hour to earn enough money for a concert she's going to. Um, the ticket's going to cost $42. So what you're supposed to do is write an inequality that shows the number of hours, and we're going to use the variable H for that, that she needs to babysit to earn at least enough money to buy the concert ticket. Well, if Mary is going to be working here, and she's going to be working for $8 per hour, we can set that up as 8 times H. And she has to earn at least enough money, so that means the number of um, or the amount of money that she earns babysitting for eight dollars per hour should be greater than forty-two dollars. Now let's think about this here. If it has to be at least forty-two dollars, well, what about if she earned equal to forty-two dollars? Well, she could still buy the ticket. She could still go to the uh, concert and rock out. So let's look here. If uh, she makes eight dollars per hour and she needs to earn forty-two dollars or at least forty-two dollars, how can she? Uh, what do we have to do here? This is just like solving an equation. You just divide both sides by eight. Cancel off. We're left with h is greater than or equal to, and forty-two divided by eight will give us six. So Mary has to work greater than or equal to six hours, and uh, so she has to work six or more hours in order to go to her concert. Well, this next slide here, uh, old Rich, he's gonna he's gonna need to fix his race car. He must have been bumping in the corners and tore off some fenders or blew up an engine or something. Um, $415. He, he didn't tear it up too bad, I guess. So let's look here. Uh, Richard needs to have his race car repaired. A mechanic estimated that the cost of the repairs would be $415. Richard has saved $125 and will mow lawns for $25 per lawn to raise enough money to pay for the repairs. I want you to write in inequality that represents the number of lawns. We're going to use the variable G. Um, we don't want to use L because L looks like a, a lowercase L looks like a number one. So we're going to use G for uh, maybe grass, mowing grass. Write an inequality that represents the number of lawns using variable G that he needs to mow to earn at least enough money to fix his car. Well, if we're looking here, well, he has saved $125 and if he mows grass for $25 per lawn, we're going to add that to the $125 he saved. So if he mows one lawn, he's going to have $150. If he mows two lawns, he's going to have $175. Three lawns will be $200, and so forth until we get to $415. Well, just like in the last example, the amount of money he earns has to be greater than or equal to four hundred and fifteen dollars and this needs to be that way 
So he can fix his race car and he can get out there and uh, win some trophies. So looking here, how do we solve this? First step. Let's get rid of this uh, 125. And let's see how many lawns he has to mow or how much money he has to make just for mowing lawns. So he has to earn $290 mowing grass. Last step, divide by 25. Divided by 25. Um, 290 divided by 25 is going to be 11.6. 11 11.6. So Richard has to mow 11.6 lawns or more in order to raise enough money to fix his race car. Well, since this is a real life situation, uh, Rich, he's not going to mow 0.6 of a yard. He's not going to, you know, do finish uh, three fifths of it and then uh, and then just stop because he's he's got enough money to fix his car and he's going to just, you know, walk away from the lawn, you know, a little more than half of it mowed. He um. So we have to, uh, since where this is real life, he has to mow 12 or more lawns. And this will be the, uh, the final answer there, the correct answer. So those are some real life situations for that. Now we're going to, um, we're going to mix it up a little bit here and we're just going to just start solving, um, solving these inequalities here. So if we have a problem that says uh, 14 is less than a plus 9, we, um, we're told to solve the inequality and graph its solution. So let's look here. If we have uh, a plus 9 on the right side, all we have to do is subtract 9 from both sides. 14 minus 9 is going to be 5. So 5 is less than a. Common mistake that a lot of people want to do when they graph this, um, let's go ahead and label our number line here. Um, since it is less than, let's see, less than or greater than, we'll have an open dot. Less than or greater than, we'll have an open dot. Now if it says less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, it'll have a closed dot. And we will use this when we graph. So if we look here, we have to put our um, dot at positive 5. And since it is less than, it'll be open. And a lot of people want to um, make the arrow go left because in a less than symbol, it looks like the arrow goes left. But that, in this situation, is going to um, cause this to be wrong. That's why um, I told you at the beginning you should understand that this is less than, and we're going to come up with test points. So this is what we have. So our test point, let's pick... Um, Let's pick that test point right there. That would be the number 7. So we're going to let A equal 7. So 5 is less than 7. Is that true? Yes, it is true. Let's pick a number on the left side of the dot, or the, the open dot. Let's pick, let's pick 0. Let A equals 0. 
So 5 is less than A, but what are we plugging in for A this time? 0. Is 5 less than 0? That would be false. So out of these two, which one is an answer? 7 or 0? Well, 7 is an answer. So instead of our arrow pointing left, like the a lot of people think with this inequality, the arrow is actually going to be pointing towards that number 7. And so we draw our line to point towards the number 7. And actually, it points towards every number that is um, greater than 5. Uh, because another way to write 5 is less than A, you can say A is greater than 5. And these are both represent the same thing, represent the same um, set of answers. So basically, any number that's greater than 5 is an answer to the inequality that we started out with right here. Let's, if we plug 7 in here, plug 7 in for A, 7 plus 9 is going to be 16, so 14 less than 16? Yes, that's true. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find every number that we can plug in to the original inequality for A and make it, uh, make it true. And if we look at the graph, that would be every number that is larger than 5. All right, let's keep on trucking here. Uh, solve the inequality and graph its solution. M minus 4 is greater than or equal to 10. Let's get rid of that minus 4. The opposite of subtracting 4 is adding 4. So, drop down our M. The 4s will cancel. Greater than or equal to 10 plus 4 is 14. Let's say 10, 12... 14, 16. Um, if we look, greater than or equal to, that means we have a closed dot. Which way does the arrow point, left or right? Well, let's come up with some test points. Let's come up with some test points. Let's, um, first test point, we're going to pick 10. Second test point, let's pick 16. So first test point, uh, M is going to be 10, so 10 greater than 14. Is 10 greater than 14? That would be false. Second test point, let 16 be substituted in for M. Is 16 greater than 14? That would be true. So if 16 is greater than 14, 16 is going to be one of the solutions, one of the answers. So the arrow will point towards 16. And it also points towards every number that is greater than 14, and including 14. This one includes 14 because we have a closed dot. 14 will be, um, will be one answer to this inequality. Solve the inequality and graph its solution for x is less than 20. Just like the last problems we've been doing, getting x by itself. Divide by 4. 4's cancel, so x is less than or equal to 5. Yeah, it sure is. And so if we're looking there, um, x is less than or equal to 5, so we'll say 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. 5 is right here. Is it going to be an open or a closed circle? What would you say? Open or closed? Yeah, it's going to be an open circle. Yeah, good job there. Open circle. Um... And now let's pick our test points. X is less than 5. Test points. Uh, let's go with 0. For some odd reason, I like 0. 
And the next one, eight. So uh, first test point, zero, less than five. Second test point, eight, less than five. Zero is less than five, true. Eight less than five, false. Can, can be eight. Eight cannot be a solution to this inequality, to the original inequality we started with. All right, so uh, since zero is a solution, our arrow will point towards zero. And I'm going to shade this, and you should shade this on your line too. Go over it a couple times, make it nice and dark. That way we can tell the difference between the number line and the graphite that you're laying down from your pencil or ink if you're using an ink pen. Uh, crayon if you're using a crayon. Um, chalk if you're using chalk. But whatever it is you're using, yeah. Okie dokie there. We have that one graphed. Um, typically, those shouldn't be there. Um, your graph should just look like what's up there. Okie dokie, why don't you go ahead and try this one there on your own? See what you can come up with. Go ahead and pause the video because I'm going to work that out there right quick for you. And uh, you'll have the answer and the solution on your paper. Most likely it'll be correct. And uh, you can check it to make sure it is with mine. And we'll go from there. So go ahead and pause the video. All right, we're looking here. We're looking to solve. We're looking to get Y by itself. So Y is on the right side. So we're going to subtract 2. Subtract 2. Uh, negative 1 minus 2 will give us a negative 3 and drop down the inequality, drop down y, and those cancel. Okie dokie then. So we have negative 3 is greater than or equal to y. So we're going to go ahead and put our number line up. Negative 3 is greater than or equal to y. It's going to be a closed circle at negative 3. Now is there a pointing towards left or towards the right? Uh, my test points, I'm going to use 0. And negative 3 is greater than 0 and I'm using um, I'm going to use negative 10. Negative 10 is on the left side of the dot. So it doesn't matter which number you pick as long as you pick any number. So negative 3 uh, up here at this uh, first test point. Negative 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Um, no. No, it's not. And on the bottom one, negative 3 is greater than or equal to negative 10. Yes, that one's true. We got a winner winner right there. So the arrow is going to point towards negative 10. Make sure you uh, darken that. Okie dokie then. There we go. Got that one finished. Uh, the answer here is going to be any number that is equal to negative 3 or less than negative 3. And you might say, hey, that's not what this says. Well, remember we can rewrite this to say y is less than or equal to negative 3. It's also another way to rewrite that. All right, this one right here, you're going to need a little bit of help on here because this is... Uh, it's throwing a curveball in into the game. Trying to get uh, the old uh, the old in inequalities trying to throw a curveball here at us, trying to strike us out. But uh, we we know it's coming, so we'll keep our eye on the pitch, and we're going to definitely hit this one uh, for a line drive base hit there, and hopefully score a run or two. So if we're looking here, this is um, we're used to this. We've done this before with solving equations. There's just one different step here, and then I'll, I'll tell you that when we get to it. So we say 2 minus 4x is less than 6. Well, we have to get rid of this 2 first. The opposite of a positive 2 is a negative 2. And so we drop down, make sure we drop down negative 4x. Do not forget that sign. Less than, and 6 minus 2 is going to be 4. You say, hey, this looks like what I've always done. Yeah, it's, it's what you've always done in solving inequalities. In order to get x by itself, we divide both sides by negative 4. 
the negative 4's on the left side cancel out, so we're left with x. And on the right side, 4 divided by negative 4 will give us a negative 1. Now this is what's different here. Anytime you, let's say, anytime you, let's say, when you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality, and we're only talking about inequalities here, by a negative number. When you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, you have to, um, whatever word you want to use here, flip, reverse, switch. Um, I'm going to write down reverse. I might use flip, I'll flip the inequality, but we're going to reverse the inequality. Remember this here, be that curveball I was talking about. You can either uh, get caught looking at it, get it wrong, and go sit on the bench, or else you can. Uh, See it coming, and uh, hit it right on the sweet spot. Get your line drive there. So let's look here. When you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, we reverse the inequality, and we notice we divided both sides by that negative number. So right here, the inequality was less than. We're going to change it to a greater than symbol. So now we have x is greater than negative 1 x is greater than negative 1. Uh, okay. We're going to go ahead and make our number line here. So we have a dot at negative 1, and it's going to be open because there's no equal sign with the greater than symbol. So x is greater than negative 1. Let's pick our test points. Uh, test point. On the right side, we're going to choose 2. On the left side, we'll choose negative 4. Uh, 2 greater than negative 1, negative 4 greater than negative 1. Which one of these test points is a solution? You gotta speak up a little bit, I can't hear you. Which one? I still can't hear you. Can you speak up a little bit louder? Maybe you need to move a little closer to the microphone there. No? I still can't hear you. Uh, well, I'll just go ahead and let you know then. 2 is greater than negative 1. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. And negative 4 is greater than negative 1. No, definitely not true there. That one would be false. So since 2 is greater than negative 1, the solution, the solution set will be pointing towards positive 2. There we go. Hey, remember, don't forget about this. Don't forget about this curveball here. Whatever you need to do to get that memorized will need done. Uh, I think you can. Uh, I think you can do this one on your own. I'm pretty sure you can do this one on your own. Um, the number you're going to have to divide by is a positive five. So there's no curveball here. That's just a straight fastball coming right in at you. So just uh, just sit back on your heels and wait for that one. And you can get it. Uh, go ahead and uh, solve this one on your own. Pause the video, and I'll work it out here in one moment. Okay, first step. Subtract 12 from both sides. 62 minus 12 is going to give us 50. Drop down our inequality of less than 5G, and uh, the 12s will cancel out. So 50 is less than 5G. Uh, this is a positive, so our inequality, a positive 5 is what we're going to divide both sides by, so our inequality stays the same. 50 divided by 5 will give you 10, the 5's cancel, and you're left with G. G is less than 10. So let's go ahead and, um, let's go ahead and write our inequality, or write our numbers for our number line. This is what we have. Um, open circle, 
test points. I'm on the left side, I'm going to pick zero. 10 is less than zero. On the right side, I'm going to pick 20. 10 is less than 20. is clear out here. Uh, I don't know if we have zero. Six, four, two, yep, zero is clear out there. So, ten is less than zero. Nope, that one's false. Uh, ten is less than tw twenty. That one is true. So, our solution set will be any number that is greater than ten. And we will shade our number line. Nice and dark like that, so that way we can tell the difference between our answer, our solution set, and and the number line. Yep, there we go. That one's graphed. You go ahead and try this one on your own. Um, be looking for that curveball. Go ahead and pause this. Pause the video. Uh, first step, uh, we're trying to get x by itself, so we're going to subtract 4 from both sides. The 4s cancel. We're dropping down negative x. Don't forget the negative sign with x. Is greater than or equal to 11. We have not multiplied or divide. Any, any, uh, multiplied or divide both sides by negative, so our inequality stays the same so far. But in this next step, that's when we, uh, when we have to divide both sides by a negative 1, because there's an invisible negative 1 there. Those cancel out. You're left with x. Um, remember, flip the inequality. Greater than or equal to. The equal to sign stays the same. It's always equal to, but the inequality flips. And 11 divided by negative 1 becomes negative 11. Let's go ahead and, um, let's go ahead and get that here. And since it's less than or equal to, it's going to be a closed dot. Pick a test point. You should always pick a test point. Don't rely on just thinking you know it. Always pick your test point. So let's pick a test point. Um, for this one on the right side, I'm going to take zero. I told you earlier I like zero. <clears throat> and on the left side, I'm going to take negative 15. So 0 is less than negative 11. 0 is less than negative 11. That would be false. On the right, oh, I'm sorry, uh, test point number 2, negative 15 is less than negative 11. There we go. That one's going to be our answer. So if we keep looking here, um, our solution set is any number that is less than or equal to negative 11. And so... Since negative 15 is a solution, we tested it. The arrow is going to point left towards negative 15. This one right here, um, if we look, it has the x's on both sides. That's not really, not really um, that much different than what we've done. We can move either the 6x to the left side with 2x, or we can move the 2x to the right side with the 6x. Now, here's where you should probably um, think a little bit, and, uh, and maybe you can make your life a little bit easier. I'm going, to, um, I'm going to suggest that you subtract 2x from both sides, because if you subtract a 2x from both sides, then you're left with, uh, let's say, negative 1 greater than 6x minus 2x, 4x plus 2. Now, what if you didn't do that? What if you didn't think ahead and you just started working on the problem? You subtracted 6x. Subtracted 6x. Well, 2x minus 6x is going to be negative 4x. You have negative 1 there. 
um, greater than, and then you have your positive 2 because those 6 is canceled out. And now look at what number is in front of x. It's a negative number, and you're going to have to, um, you're going to, have to try and hit a curveball here in a little bit. Um, next step, add 1 to both sides. So negative 4x is greater than 3. And here comes that curveball. Divide both sides by negative 4. Once I said that negative 4, you should have flipped that inequality. Cancels. X is less than negative 3 fourths. Well, let's go back to what I started out with on the left side here. Uh, subtract 2 from both sides. So we have negative 3 is greater than 4x. We divide by a positive number, so the inequality stays the same. So this is what we have. And you might think, hey, on the left one here we have a negative or I'm sorry, on the left one here we have a greater than, and on the right one we have a less than. But look at where the variable is. The left one says negative 3 fourths is greater than x, and which that means that x has to be smaller than 3 fourths, and that's what this one here on the right side says. x is less than negative 3 fourths. All right, so how do we graph this here? Um, well, we can graph either one. They're, they're both exactly the same. But when graphing, negative 3 fourths is going to be between 0, which is right here, and negative 1, which is right here. Well, we know 3 fourths is 3 quarters, which means it's, um, it's above 1 half, but below a whole. And it's um, exactly halfway between a half and a whole, if that makes any sense. So, like right there is going to be your negative one half. And probably somewhere about right there is your negative three fourths. Now, is this going to be an open or closed circle? Dot open. Now pick a test point. Test points, uh, 0 and negative 2. I'm going to use this box right here. So test point 0 is less than negative 3 over 4, and test point negative 2 less than negative 3 over 4. Uh, 0 less than negative 3 fourths, no. Negative 2 less than negative 3 fourths. You got it. So since negative 2 is, a, is an answer, our arrow will point towards negative 2 like this. And there we go. Answer, answer to the uh, inequality. It's going to be any number that's less than negative 3 fourths. Let's go ahead and uh, you take a moment, solve this one out on your own, pause the video, and uh, work the solution. I'm going to work it out here in one moment, so you go ahead and, uh, and make sure you think about which side you want to move X to, because uh, this, this could possibly save you one step, save you from trying to swing at a curveball. Um, let's see here. I want to subtract 2X from both sides. 4x minus 2x is a positive 2x. This is what we're left with. In order to get x by itself, we have to add 1 to both sides. So 2x is greater than or equal to negative 4 plus 1. Negative 4 plus 1, what is it? Negative 3. And then divide each one by each side by 2. Since we divided by a positive number, the inequality will stay the same. Negative 3 over 2. Negative 3 halves. Negative 3 halves is uh, as a decimal is negative 1.5.
So that right there is between 1 and 2, halfway between negative 1 and 2. Closed. The equal to sign right there makes it a closed dot. Now let's pick uh, test points. 0 greater than or equal to negative 3 halves. Test point on the left side. Negative 2 greater than or equal to negative 3 halves. So when we look here, 0 is greater than negative 3 halves. So that one's true. And negative 2 is actually less than negative 3 halves. So that one's false. So the arrow will point towards 0. There you go. The arrow points towards 0. It's uh, any any number that is greater than or equal to negative one and a half, negative three halves. Moving on, this one right here, not any different than what we've been doing. The only, um, just the first step difference is that you have that four outside the parentheses that you have to distribute. And, um, and then you can solve it from there. So go ahead and distribute that 4 to everything inside the parentheses. Then it should look like the previous uh, couple examples. And you should be able to solve those. Go ahead and pause the video and I'll work this out for you real quick. And then you can uh, check your solution with mine. Uh, to distribute 4 and P and 4 and 2, uh, 4 times 2 is 8. The inequality doesn't change. It stays where it's at right now. Um, in order to get this uh, get this solved for p, typically I'd probably want to add one p to both sides. Uh, that way I make the number in front of p positive. But let's just say you weren't thinking and you subtracted 4p. Every once in a while that happens. You forget to think and uh, it's okay. Still solve the problem. Just adds one more step to it. Um, the 8. The 8 is positive, so we're going to leave it as an 8. Uh, we subtracted both from both sides. We didn't, uh, we didn't multiply or divide. We just subtracted, so the inequality stays the same. And uh, let's get P by itself. Subtract 3 from both sides. So negative 5P is less than... Uh, that's a 5. 8 minus 3 is 5. How do we get P by itself? Uh, let me slide this down out of the way a little bit. Uh, you divide both sides by negative 5. Cancels. So P is, is, is what? Curveball. Divided both sides by a negative number. You have to uh, change the inequality. And 5 divided by negative 5 will give us negative 1. Negative 1 is going to be graphed with an open dot because it's just greater than. And uh, let's pick test points. Let's pick the test point of 2 on the right side. And on the left side, we can pick the test point of, say, negative 5. Test point um, 2 is greater than negative 1. I believe that's true. And the second test point, negative 5, is greater than negative 1. That would not be true. So since 2 is a solution, all the numbers to the right of negative 1 on a number line will be a solution. There we go. Solving inequalities doesn't get uh, doesn't get much more difficult than that. If you got any questions, let me know. Thanks for tuning in.